Miami Heat, Milwaukee Bucks playoff series kicks off today. Let's show you everything you need to know about that series. Make sure you follow Scout with Brian on Twitter. First of all, let's preview the matchups. Goran Dragic starting at point guard, obviously, for the Heat. Came off the bench, though, basically all season, maybe partially so that he could be fresh for the playoffs. Obviously, lefty going left almost every time when he drives. Really torched the Pacers. Scored almost 23 a game against them. Selfless guy is going to take a lot of charges. Tremendous competitor. Really brings a lot of fire, passion to the game. 37% from three on the season. Definitely can hit spot-up shots and then also mid-range off the dribble. Duncan Robinson has emerged basically as the best shooting specialist in the league. Almost 90% of his shots are threes. Shot 45% from deep. He is constantly playing those two-man game actions with Bam. And then off the ball, he is flying around off of actions like this. The ball goes in the post. It's almost always to then try to free him up on down screens. And if he's not freed up, Wesley Matthews most likely is going to start off guarding him. He's going to do a really good job pursuing, pursuing, pursuing. But you cannot relax for a second against Duncan Robinson. Look how much movement he makes every second he's on the court. He is relentless, even if you get a pretty good contest on him doesn't mean he's not still going to make shots. Miami, I thought, did a phenomenal job. Milwaukee did a phenomenal job in their last matchup, really chasing him, really making everything tough. Still made five threes. He'll come off floppy action. He'll come off this little uh, Horns 21 type action. Whenever they hit Bam at the elbow, this is a big play for them. It's going to usually go into split game, guard to guard. They're going to play games. Duncan loves to slip out of it. And then again, he can hit threes in almost every variety off the dribble, flares. That's the kind of pressure Milwaukee has to keep on him. Pat Connington does a great job staying into his body there, riding him, knocking the ball off him, ultimately out of bounds. Milwaukee, though, like I said, they give up a ton of threes. This is the real danger and what scares me about them in this series. Obviously, you cannot lose this guy, Duncan Robinson, from three at all. Milwaukee's game plan usually is to try to take away the rim. They really collapse in. Miami made 21 threes against them in their matchup in the bubble. Jimmy Butler, obviously the big acquisition. Him and Drogic didn't play when these two teams met in the bubble. But this is what Jimmy does. He is heart. He is motor. He is nonstop. Back taps. Hustle plays. Look where he's going to come from here to block Siakam. All the way guarding Lowry on the weak side. He is in the right spots defensively. Great shot blocking instincts, great defensive instincts overall. Offensively, this is the main play they're going to run for him. It's a little Maggetti cut type from the corner. He's going to face cut you. Dragic frequently is going to dribble right at him, and he's going to face cut almost right into the paint. That's the main action. you got to be ready for him. We'll see it again this very next play. Again, when he's in this corner and they dribble towards him, he's trying to cut right in front of you for a layup. If you take it away, the ball's getting moved around. Him and Bam have a really good rapport. Little back screen, side out of bounds play here. Bam does a great job finding him on his cuts. And then, obviously, play some post up. Loves to face you up. Little rip through here. Drive baseline. Draw the help. And then that's when Miami really does a great job moving the ball around. Find three-point shooters. Jay Crowder, after not shooting well in Memphis, almost 45% on six and a half threes a game in Miami. He has been a big-time spacer for them. Iguodala was the coveted piece of that trade. Iguodala. Uh, Crowder's been better than he has, though. He's been a phenomenal starting piece for Miami. Look at this little pistol action here. This is where Bam does such a great job picking you apart with the pass. And then, again, great ball movement where Brooke Lopez had a really hard time finding shooters, getting out to guys, knowing when he had to rotate. Again, you see Milwaukee... Their emphasis is take away the paint, take away the rim, but that's kind of dangerous against a team like Miami that spaces the floor so well. You see Hero driving kick. Chris Middleton cannot be in this much, or that's just going to be constant, wide-open three-point opportunities for guys like Crowder that have a tendency to really make you pay. Aside from that, Rugged can run the floor a little bit, brings a little chip on his shoulder, tough toughness to the game, and another body, obviously, they can throw at Giannis. Bam, most improved player, most likely, in the game jack of all trades five he's gonna block shots impact things at the rim hustle look at that that's heat culture right there bam phenomenal block jimmy butler 
phenomenal hustle to save the ball. That's what they do. They play harder than you consistently. He's going to post up a little bit. Little old school low post game. Good with both hands. He's got a little 15 foot jumper. Not much further range than that. Face up. Loves to jab and drive you, particularly going left. But can definitely go both ways. And then what he does most importantly is pass the living crap out of the ball. He is so good. They love to just hit him kind of at these elbows, elbow area. And then again, it's nonstop motion, movement, cutters, reading how Milwaukee's playing you. And Bam just does a great job. When he backs you down to the post, again, frequently looking to pass out of those situations as well. For Milwaukee, Eric Bledsoe, rugged point guard, mostly a defensive player. He's hit or miss offensively. Can be very hot and cold. 34% from three. Excuse me, sorry about that. 34% from three. Generally likes to get downhill, try to attack the paint. That's when he's at his best offensively attack in the basket. Again, you can live with going under him on some ball screens, daring him to beat you from outside. He'll knock a couple in, but overall, if he's living outside shooting threes, I think Miami's okay with that. Bledsoe, again, will look to make most of his impact on the defensive end. Wes Matthews, pretty much a 3 and D guy at this point. In his career, you see Orlando did a great job walling up against Giannis. That's going to lead, though, to a lot of open shot opportunities for Matthews, who, again, knocks him down pretty well, spots up, and then guards pretty much the opposing team's best wing type score. He'll spend some time on Jimmy, spend some time on Duncan Robinson. Again, really stretch the floor with his range. Chris Middleton, tough shot maker. He's going to hit threes off the bounce. ISO player, one of the most efficient scorers in the league. Can basically do it in every variety as well. Phenomenal spot up shooter. Really good face up jab game. This is kind of what he really wants to do when he's at his money spot. He's Milwaukee's mid-range guy that can give them that added dynamic and then stay down on his shot fake. He's a multiple shot fake guy. Going to give you a lot of these. Avoid sending him to the free throw line with easy ones like this on multiple shot fakes. And then obviously Giannis. He is pretty much the team. Biggest thing with him. Walling up. Orlando showed a little blueprint how to do it in game one. Obviously harder to maintain that all series, especially with their lack of offense. But Giannis loves to attack from this top of key spot. My, Milwaukee in a basic five out alignment. You have to do a good job on the ball, but then these two guys at the wings have to do a great job showing him bodies, being in the paint to start to discourage the drive a little bit. Birch did a great job drawing a charge obviously there. Again, make Giannis kick the ball out, especially from that top. What you can't do, live ball turnovers. When you turn the ball over like this, Giannis, he's too good to go against five on fours, five on threes, whatever it is. He's obviously a one-man fast break. You have no chance guarding him if you have two, three guys back. You need four, probably five guys back every single time to wall up, make things tough on him. Again, Miami didn't do nearly as good of a job as Orlando did in that first game. Here, once again, you need none to be in a stance right here. You need Crowder to be even tighter in, in the gap, because that's the difference. Whether he gets into this gap or not right here, it's not about Bam. Bam's fine. It's about Kendrick Nunn right here, being a little bit closer in, again, being in a stance. Because if you're not, again, he just that's the difference between being able to get in this tiny gap or not which you see again Giannis does there, and then nobody obviously in the league more explosive getting to the basket. There's another example. Olenek does okay one-on-one, -on -one, but you can't do it with three, four guys back. You need all five back against Giannis consistently to have a chance. You see again here another example. Bam's fine. Olenek's not. Not in the right spot. Got to be in what we call plug. Be in the gap. Be in the gap. Loves to spin off you, obviously, to get to his dunks. If you're not in those gaps where you're supposed to be, you're in trouble. Another example here, none. Not tight enough in, Crowder. A little too easy for him on the spin move there. Regardless of what you do, Giannis still going to get five or six, most likely, dunks a game. And again, 
Miami's focal point has to be trying to keep him out of the paint. He's going to get some of these regardless, but Hero has to do a better job being ready to help here. Derek Jones will see some time on him. Solomon Hill may be a little bit off the bench. Crowder started on him last game. Anytime you can force Giannis to be a three-point shooter, 30% from threes, make a couple, but you're living with that shot. That's what you want to do with him, keep him out of the paint. Miami did a better job guarding him on his post-ups. Crowder, again, rugged, tough guy, did a pretty good job. Being low in the stance, really bodying Giannis with physicality whenever he caught the ball in the post. Better job here as Bam's matched up on him. Good wall, good digs by Crowder. Giannis, you're going to see, is going to repost here. Have to make sure when he faces you up, take away the baseline. Bam does a good job of that here. Loves to drive you baseline. Send him back to the middle. Send him to the digs. Active hands in there. Much better job by Miami there, making him see bodies. Can't have this. Again, can't have him jab you and then drive baseline. You're dead if that happens. Make sure you know the rules as well. As a fan, just a reminder, when he's backing you down, you can have an arm bar. So Crowder here is perfect. You can have one hand on him, sometimes even two, even though you're not technically supposed to. What Giannis will do then, though, Back it back out. When he faces you up like this, now you can't touch him. Now it's hand checking. So now he's going to use his speed, beat you to the spot. Brooke Lopez, stretch five, but much more in the post than last year. Miami may start Crowder on him, but again, more than he ever has for Milwaukee. They made a concerted effort to get Brooke down to the post. Loves this kind of sweep through move, especially if he feels two hands on you like Crowder has hit there. Loves that rip through move. They'll run some cross-screen action for him. Miami does a really good job fronting the post. Wouldn't be shocked to see them front some, especially if Crowder or a smaller defender starts on him. You see a Linux in the front here, and then Hero's going to do a great job being the backside when they try to make the lob over the top. You come trap it. Still, though, Brooks got really good footwork for an awkward guy his size. Got to do a nice job making sure he doesn't split your trap. You see here Crowder's going to play behind him, and then that's too easy. For him to get middle, again, really good touch. Not super, you know, advanced with his post moves or anything, but he's going to find a way to float the ball up and do pretty well down there. An added dynamic that he didn't really have in the playoffs last year. Otherwise, a stretch five, obviously. Make a corner three. I don't care what his percentage is. He is a big-time stretch five. His percentage is lower this season because he's shooting ridiculous shots like this. Tough ass, contested, off the move. He plays like a shooting guard, but his shots are tough. They all have to be contested. If you don't do that, he will burn you from three. And then one thing just to keep an eye on, you have to put him in pick and rolls, and then especially with Olenek, because what Brook really struggles with, he is always in a drop against the pick and roll, which is good. Take away the basket for the guard. But if you have a big that can shoot like Vucevic can, or like Olenek, or maybe Myers Leonard, if you throw it back to them on the pop, he has a really hard time recovering, because when he's in the drop, he's all the way back at the rim, and now he has to run six feet, get back out to contest that shot. We'll see it again here. Guard gets downhill. Look how far Brook has to go. He cannot recover like that. Look to see if they have to make any adjustments if he struggles to get out and guard Olenek at the three-point line. For Miami offensively, they are a motion offensive team. They do love to get out, run in transition. They have multiple ball handlers. Olenek's got a good feel for the game. Iguodala, Crowder, Jimmy Butler, obviously. Nunn, Drogic, a lot of different guys that can handle the ball. And then they are a non-stop movement team, like I said. Bam almost is the point guard on a whole lot of possessions. Here, just see delay action. He's going to handle the ball coming down the floor. Split game on both sides. Going to go into dribble handoffs. And then again, whenever they hit him in these spots, non-stop movement. Can't fall asleep for a second. Split game right here. Two shooters. Hero's going to back cut. Great pass. Phenomenal, phenomenal passer. Bam is. you got to make sure you pressure him. If Brook Lopez plays this far off, he better take away the rim because otherwise you're just in dead man's land. You're going to let Bam pick you apart with the passing. Look at Duncan Robinson here. He's going to hit and then cut. Bam makes those passes better than almost anybody in the league. Great ball movement again by uh, Miami to get 21 made threes last game that they played. 
You see again, they hit Bam in this spot. They have so many different actions where it's just almost basketball coaching poor. And they are going into cutters. And again, Duncan, they were trying so hard, almost face guard him, not let him come out to three. But Brook Lopez here is doing nothing. He either needs to get up and pressure Bam, make it harder for him to pass, or back all the way up and take away the basket. For Milwaukee, offensively, obviously, their system is Giannis. Huge key is making sure you always have a big body on him. They're going to have sometimes small set pick and rolls like you see Korver do here. Olenek just happened to be guarding him this time, so that's a pretty easy switch. They don't mind switching Olenek on him from time to time, and Olenek does a pretty decent job there. Good job packing the paint by Miami, forcing the kick out. Here, though, this is more the dangerous one. Duncan Robinson on Connington is going to come set it. They do not want to switch him, obviously, on Giannis. So he's going to get out in a show. Same thing, Hero, Nunn, Drogic. They're not going to want to switch him them onto Giannis at all. So great hedge there by Duncan Robinson. What that can create, though, is some of these pop threes, especially for Korver. Question is, can these guys knock him down? Connington, DiVincenzo, they're going to set a lot of ball screens for Giannis. Same thing here, Marvin Williams. Again, the flexibility, the great thing that Miami has, a lot of bodies, a lot of bigs, big bodies that allow you to keep size on Giannis. You see Olenek is going to switch this one here. And then again, he's all right guarding Giannis. You don't need to overhelp, but he does. they do a great job packing the paint. Here, uh, Brook Lopez obviously is going to come set it. Andre Iguodala is going to come up with him so he can switch. Another body. He can guard him. Crowder can guard him. Olenek can guard him. They have a lot of different bodies. And obviously, bam, they can make things tough for Giannis. And then Lopez again will get the ball in the post from time to time. This angle pick and roll they love. Look what Miami does here. Switch. Nice and easy. Bam. Good switch defender. Can guard all five positions. He can switch on a Middleton. Crowder can switch on Giannis. Now they're good. Everybody's solid when you can switch pick and rolls. Expect Miami to do a ton of switching in this series with all the bodies they have on Giannis. Again, just have to make sure they keep a big on him. Brook Lopez, same thing in pick and rolls. You can switch a lot of his. That takes away his pop threes. Again, Bam switching onto the ball. Crowder switching onto Lopez. That's fine. Miami will live with that. Keep a body on a body. Again here, Bam switching on to George Hill. Iguodala switching on to Lopez. Make them play one-on-one, -on -one, live with tough contested threes. The thing that does scare me a little bit about Milwaukee, they don't run a ton of different things offensively. They basically just have their five-out system where everybody's going to be in one of those corner slots or top, and they are you know, just going to play one-on-one. -on -one. Which is fine if you have a mismatch like Bledsoe does here. and He's going to end up beating Olenek and getting to the free throw line. But they are not going to call many plays. They run a lot fewer sets than M Miami does. They don't have a bam to throw the ball to and have guys cut and move nonstop. They basically just play in this kind of five-out alignment almost all the time. And they're going to try to drive and kick you. But again, Corver's not a guy that's getting into gaps. Wes Matthews, not really. Bledsoe's all right. Obviously, Giannis, Middleton can make huge shots. But if you do a really good job playing shell defense like Miami does here, showing Giannis a lot of bodies, crowding the paint, you can live with that. It's going to be on Bud. Draw up some different things, get some movement sets, and find some other ways for Milwaukee to score. Overall, should be a phenomenal series. I think Miami's ability to stretch the floor, create a whole lot of threes, is going to be really tough for Milwaukee to defend. That's why I think the Heat win this series in seven. Make sure you thumb up, subscribe, and go to patreon.com slash scatwithbrian if you want bonus videos, bonus previews of all the bench, some plays both teams run, a whole lot more. Again, thumb up, subscribe, a whole lot more coming soon.